Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is making it clear that he has a different strategy than his predecessors when it comes to dealing with Gaza and the West Bank. ILTV's Steve Leibowitz sat down with Jerusalem Post editor Yaakov Katz to find out how Israel will respond to future terror attacks. And Katz claims the days of the Jewish state's muted responses are now over. Yaakov Katz, editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post and former military reporter, Yesterday, we heard about a couple of rockets fall against their rope harmlessly. Nobody was injured. We're used to kind of a tit-for-tat Israeli response. We send some, uh, some, uh, some bombers into Gaza, hit a couple of sites, don't do much damage, and then quiet is restored for another few months. This morning, we woke up to the news that there was pretty massive bombing in areas of, of Gaza that where this rocket was fired from. Is it a new policy of Defense Minister Lieberman? Well, I think you're right that usually we used to see one rocket that's launched at Israel and then Israel fires and launches something at the same level, let's say, just to send a message that we don't let these things happen quietly. This time we saw more uh, wider response. Uh, possibly you could say that it's even disproportionate to one rocket landing and dozens of targets uh, uh, struck in overnight by the Israel Air Force. On the other hand, I think that this it does fit into Avigdor Lieberman's new policy as defense minister. He recently unveiled this new plan. He called it the carrot and stick plan to the Palestinian places or villages or towns or cities where which are good to Israel. Now you're words, turning to the West Bank. Well, that's in the West Bank, which but it fits also to Gaza where there there's no terror. They'll be rewarded with economic benefits, with building permits, etc. But places or towns or villages where terror emanates from, those will be punished. And I think we're seeing the same thing in Gaza. As long as Gaza is good and quiet and, and the ceasefire is maintained, Israel will do the same. But if there's one rocket, even one, that violates that quiet, Avigdor Lieberman and the IDF will strike back fiercely. It sounds more like how you train your dog rather than how you try to make peace with a neighbor. Well, I think with Hamas particularly in Gaza, I don't know that there is a peace to be spoken about at the moment. I think that with Hamas in Gaza, unfortunately for the time being, until they change their ways, we're still talking about that violence does need to be met by violence. And the, the only language, unfortunately, that Hamas understands in Gaza is one of force. And we've seen, for example, that two years after Operation Protective Edge in the summer of 2014, the quiet has maintained itself because they did get such a heavy, sustain a heavy blow during that war over the summer two years ago. But you need to maintain that. Deterrence is something It's like mowing a lawn. Every once in a while, you need to go in and trim the grass. So same thing here is that when if they violate that ceasefire and they violate the quiet, you might need to respond disproportionately to get them to realize it's not even worth one rocket because of the response that Israel will bring their way. Well, they're not firing the rockets. It's more radical Islamic groups. And isn't there a danger of things spiraling out of control to another Gaza war? You know, when, when saying that it's a radical Salafi group that fires out of Gaza and it's not Hamas, it's like saying in Israel it's uh, a radical police officer and it's not the Israel police. This is a country in Israel and we take responsibility like any democratic country for what happens inside. And I think Hamas has a very strong grip on what happens inside the Gaza Strip. They can stop rocket fire if they want. They can rein in some of these more radical groups. It would mean possibly having to uh, clash with them, but they have that capability. It's their decision if they want to do it or not. So ultimately Ultimately, they are the final address on what happens. And that new policy in the West Bank of Lieberman's, the carrot and stick policy, as you called it, uh, dealing with the villages directly rather than dealing with the Palestinian Authority, is that a non-starter or is it actually a clever idea of, of, of divide and conquer? Well, I think on the one hand, there's something nice about the fact that we, we're realizing inside the Israeli government, or Lieberman at least is, that peace is not obtained just from top down by talking leaders across the table from leaders and signing agreements. We've seen that that doesn't always, that may make peace between governments, but doesn't make peace between peoples. So doing something also bottom up by engaging with villagers, engaging with academics, intellectuals, businessmen, is something that I think we should look at favorably. On the other hand, if it's supposed to be just on its own as, a, as an alternate route for achieving peace, we know that it can't work on its own. You do need agreements between governments. So it seems like everyone is recognizing the fact that there is no peace process, there is no deal that's to be had in the near future. So we're just kind of dribbling the ball and saying, okay, we'll do this or we'll do that. Now we'll talk to villagers or we'll talk to these people. It sounds nice on paper. Will it really do anything to bring about a peace solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? I'm doubtful. Dribbling the ball, eventually you have to shoot. 
Yaakov Katz, thanks so much for being with us at Thank ILTV. You.